Now, I really have to keep on the time on this one because that's when my dinner is going to be ready in about 20 minutes. I'll make this about 20 minutes. Um, I was talking about um, the sexuality of a lot of my characters. Um, my main um, character in Autumn, like I said, she's been with only one man, but they were very, you know, loose, you know, and stuff. And um, of course, the man in Missouri is he's traveled all over the world. He's had all these exotic, you know, um, interludes and, and different things like that. I only have um, one actual virgin um, in so, that I've written so far, female that I've, I've written so far. And it only, it only made, it made sense because she's raised in a, this is an unspoken, the short story I'm telling you guys about. She's raised in the Abbey, in the convent. So she really doesn't, you know, because because she's a healer and stuff, of course, she's been um, she's been, you know, she knows where babies come from. She's delivered babies. She's seen, you know, the things that could happen. Um, but she's not around men, you know, men that, you know, men her age. She's not around men that she, you know, could have slipped away somewhere and, you know, and lost her virginity. She she just she still has it. And it, it's, it brings an extra dynamic to it, the naivete. It brings a lot of um, dynamics to her because when she's with this man, he actually knows what he's doing. And she's like, whoa, okay, this is what I've been missing all this time. But um, the character actually in my second book, she's more of a, oh, and I was in the, um, back at, at Autumn, the, um, the arch villain, well, he was a slave. He's never made love. He he's never been in love or and held a woman or had you know someone that he he's been loved with. He was um, you know in order to have more slaves, you know you had to your male slaves had to have you know sex so you could have more slaves, you know, to build up your um, inventory. So um, he's run around and, you know, had sex. And his idea of sex is you jump in there, you get it done quick and you, you know, you go. It's no, you know, that that's the only thing he knows about sex. And his attitude towards sex is what gets him into, you know, the, a predicament where he finally does have something to lose. He has something to lose um, in his life that's very important. And it's all tied to his sexuality. And, um, but I think, um, in the second book, um, my character is searching for something. She doesn't know what it is though. She doesn't, she's not really sure what it is. She's, um, she's had like a, you know, like a high school boyfriend, you know, and I, they, I don't know if they went all the way or not. I haven't figured it out. Her um, Jewish lover that she had, he was, you know, kind of experienced. He was, you know, married. And, you know, like I said, it's just a vehicle for a book. I don't believe in that stuff. But um, he was very good to her, very kind to her and gave her, you know, a lot of things. And um, part of who she is, she has, a, she has a, a child by him. So therefore she takes her child and hides her child away. One of the scenes I really like in um, book two is that um, her vocal coach is married. Like I said, when he and his wife realize that they're going to be transported, his wife brings their children to my lead character, knocks on the back of the theater door and, and shoves them in, you know, and, and says, look, you know, watch my kids and that brings a lot of importance and kind of a danger and sadness to the story because that's this woman knows she's probably going to die and who she trusts and trusts her children with is the mistress of her husband's mistress you know but it just goes to show how dire the you know the situation was that she didn't she'd rather have her children with this woman than um and that's a lot of the things that happen because she wasn't really, you know, into the uh, musician's uh, uh, wife, wasn't really into sex. You know, she was one of those, you know, raised right European women that, you know, hurry up and get it over with, think about something else, <laughs> you know, kind of women. And 
when they arrive at the camp is when she and her husband, you know, she gives that he has a, had a mistress and, you know, this kind of thing. And what happens is it's a pure kind of love between those two, a real sort of love that trans transcends like um, being sexual and just the day to day things that, you know, men and, you know, men and wives, you know, men and their wives and men and women do every partners do every morning, you know, you get up, you kind of hung, grown at your, you know, at your own spouse, you sit there, you read the paper, you drink your coffee, one goes one way, one goes the other way, you don't see each other until six o'clock at night. And um, this kind of thing. And what ends up happening is that he, they have a deeper kind of love. They're not even together. They're on different sides of the camp. And I made him, um, have access i haven't figured out quite yet um because he would have had a much easier life as a musician because a lot of times some musicians had a you know had it kind of easy because they played in the camp orchestra and stuff like that and so they were kind of protected and you know, know what but i don't know i don't know i don't know maybe that's too easy you know, and it can't be too easy. That's, you know, that's, if I have to, that's the thing I have to preach. Stay away from stereotypes. Don't let it be so easy. Don't let somebody know um, exactly what's going on. So I think of making him maybe a couple or something like that. I, I haven't made up my mind yet, but the, they have this pure love and he's basically, you know, in a position where he can bring her a little extra bread and or bring her a little extra soup or, you know, actually their survival, you know, are, is dependent on each other. Wherein when they were wealthy, you know, living in Paris, he was a, you know, famous composer, conductor, you know, music uh, teacher, you know, taught the best people. And she was a socialite and a mother and, you know, had her own, you know, thing to go to that they never, they never loved each other. You know, their marriage was arranged and they never loved, you know, each other. And they never had this cherished feelings, feeling that they do when they get to the camp. And, you know, it's going to end tragically. I haven't figured out that part yet. You know, I, I think it would be too pat. It would be too um, stereotypical for them both to make it out. So, I, but I haven't figured that out. But meanwhile, my, um, my heroine is, she lives in Paris. She kind of, um, she came to Paris and she's an entertainer and she's had men just adore her. You know, she's like a, you know, she's like a, um, you know, she's a, um, everybody in town knows who she is. You know, she's a, a famous, you know, a personality kind of person. Um, one of the scenes that I really like is that she, um, she's in, she's in her dressing room. And um, her dressing room is full of yellow roses. Now you have to understand there's a war going on. Where the devil all these yellow roses came from, we don't know. But that's also one of the um, one of the things that kind of shows wealth. Like I would say, you know, show don't tell. That shows how you know important she is. She gets a lot of adoration from males. And but there's still something she can't, you know, she can't quite put her finger on what's you know, what she's missing, you know, what she's missing until she meets the hero and kind of, and he's very, I made him, you know, I always talk about don't be so predictable and don't be so stereotypical, but I did make him a bit sadistic. And I think, um, it's a good move. You know, it's not so cut and dry. It's not so pad. It's not so, uh, you know, after you, understand him a little bit better you know it's it's um it's kind of natural he'd be this way you know and like i said in the end I, i'm a big um fan of redemption you know in the end and he kind of too little too late decides that hey look you know i can't you know do this anymore i'm going to um you know i'm going to go back to berlin and try to do something to stop whatever's going on a little bit too late and also um the fact that he could do this awful job he has to do it, that's the hypocrisy of it is that he could do this these awful things he has to do 
you know, in the line of duty, you know, in his, you know, duty to the Reich, but still be with this black, um, you know, cabaret entertainer, you know, that he would, that he could, you know, compartmentalize his life like that. And that's part of the, the, the sadism, you know, that he, the sadism that he has, you know, that he, um, experiences. I don't, I'm not really, I really didn't want, um, the World War II characters. I didn't want them really cut and dry. Like the, like the, the, I want, I always want my characters to have more dimension, you know, to them, to them. They want, I want them to have more dimension than just regular, you know, you know, a pampered slave girl that, you know, does the stuff that, you know, I want her to be petty and jealous and, you know, have moments of stuff and have my men have, you know, be sensitive sometimes and have moments of, you know, absolute when they just want to be, you know, held and, you know, and, and comforted and, you know, before they go back out in the big bad world and, you know, conquer it. Um, but like I said, and I, and, and like I said, I only had one, um, virgin and that just kind of made sense, but I did, um, what I tried to do was I tried to keep it real. I tried to keep the sex scenes real. I tried to keep the sexuality real. I tried to keep, um, okay, it's not bang, bang, great every single time, you know, that's impossible. And I think it lead, that leads, um, little girls into a, um, idea that, you know, that they, when they read those romance novels, that the guy's going to grab you and you're going to be, you know, exploding with desire as soon as he touches you and, you know, all this stuff like that. And, you know, here you go. But when in, life and reality, it really isn't like that, you know, because my character in Missouri says, well, um, she says, well, you know, sometimes we make love in the morning because I'm just too tired at night, you know, and those kind of things. And then when she gets pregnant, the, you know, when she gets the, you know, no more relationship, you know, jump, you know, down on her that, um, the, they have to make love differently. You know, they have to do different things, especially when she got big, you know, in her pregnancy, they had to, you know, maneuver around things. And it also shows a lot of, um, I think it, it, it shows that he has, the, that's why I said, I think a lot of men will like it because, um, he has a woman who, you know, wants to have sex with him and, you know, wants to, um, relate to him in a sexual way. And this kind of gives him the power to go out and, you know, conquer the world to go out there in those fields and dig and plow and, you know, cause he's doing all this stuff for this woman. He really, really loves, he really cares for. Um, and part of her sexuality is that, you know, she has her, she ends up having a child. Um, I wrote something else. Yeah. Virgins. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't know how to go about writing a male virgin. I really wouldn't even know, you know, how to even go about that. But maybe in one of my other, you know, maybe in another book, maybe another, maybe in Raven Knight, I could have the squire. It could be his first time, maybe. Oh, also, I know what I was going to say about the, um, about the, um, character in, um, Unspoken, the one that's the virgin, the actual, like the Abbey in the, um, that, you know, in the convent where she was raised, the Abbey, a Abbess actually has a son, but of course he isn't with her. He isn't raised with her. He's, you know, he's in, with another couple somewhere, you know, being taken care of. And once in a while, the sheriff will bring him by so she can just see him. But, you know, he has no idea the child and has no idea that, you know, she, this Abbess is his mother and she can't leave the Abbey because she used to be an outlaw. So she has sanctuary as long as she stays in the, um, in the Abbey. And one of the scenes I really like out of that story is that, um, the sheriff comes to visit her and, uh, no, um, the girl, the Moor, who was raised at the Abbey after, um, Sir Guy takes her, steals her, takes her away, you know, takes her to Castle York or Nottingham or wherever the devil he takes her. And he has her locked in there. And the abbess is like, look, I want her back. <laughs> okay. Her parents entrusted her to me. I want her back. You know, I don't want anything to happen to her. I want her back. And, um, the sheriff says to the abbess, you know, um, did not you say yourself that only a woman who knows the pleasure 
of, you know, physical love can take a vow of chastity and it means something, you know, because that's what I always figured out when I was a Catholic girl, you know, school, I used to think, okay, you take a vow of chastity, you, you never had sex. So it, what are you, what are you giving up? I mean, I, you know, that's another thing. And basically that's what um, he says to the abbess. And of course he, he's always resented the fact that um, she never, wanted to raise their child. She never wanted to make a life together, but you know, he was a head forester and she was an outlaw. And that's why she can't, you know, it comes down to different things and that's why she can't um, leave the Abbey. And on top of that, she doesn't want that to happen to her protege. She wants her protege to marry and, you know, actually, you know, be, have a life and be able to take care of her children. She doesn't want her just to get pregnant by somebody. And then, you know, um, um, so I thought that was a very interesting um, and I didn't think about that till like after I had written the scene and I thought, hmm, because I had made um, the young man, the squire, the son of the sheriff, but I really, I left it kind of ambiguous who the mother was and it didn't hit me until the vision that I saw in my head was how she was looking at this boy, how she looked at him when, the, you know, because he's the sheriff squire, so he's always with him everywhere he goes, and he goes to the Abbey, you know, and to explain himself why, you know, his one of his knights has kidnapped this moor, you know, and got her in the castle and won't let her go. And um, the abbess looks at this boy a certain way in my mind. I saw it in my mind, and I thought, wow, it's because she's his son. And it was just like how I got the idea of the, um, in the second book, the World War II book of the woman that knows she's about to be transported. I put myself in that um, mode, in that, in that mindset kind, of course, I don't know what that is like, but um, I put myself in that mindset thinking to myself, who would I leave my, who would I leave my children with? If I, if I knew I was probably going to go somewhere and die, who would I leave them with? And she chooses to leave them with her husband's mistress. Yes. But also they have a little sister, a half sister, you know? So, um, and then what my almost called her name, I don't want to call her name. She, her love for this, for her, for her, you know, for her, um, vocal coach, the man that she loves, you know, the married man is, um, trans kind of transcends. She trans, she transfers it to these two children. She treats them as her own. She hides them away with her own children. She, you know, makes sure that they're taken care of because it's like a sacred thing she's been, you know, entrusted with is this man's, um, children. And another good scene that I like is that um, what they would do is when they would go um, into the camps, they would have them write postcards, you know, back home and say, hey, this is a great place. Yeah, we're cool. Yeah, everything's good. You know, yeah, don't worry. You know, we're just, you know, we're working. We're having a good old time. You know, we're playing football games. And um, a lot of the talent, a lot of the um, expertise that I have is kind of double um, tundra kind of thing. So my character, she's still in Paris. She gets this postcard that says, oh, we're having a good time here. You know, the heart, the work is hard, but we have football games at night and all this really nonsense. But he tells her in the card on the postcard, um, thank you for taking care of the animals. You know, we'll have them back. I think we're going to go on a vacation when we leave here. We'll be leaving here probably soon. And I think we're going to go on a vacation to um, visit Uncle blank blank. You know, like I have an Uncle Chuck, you know, which he's still alive, thank God. But I mean, and this particular uncle that he mentions in this postcard, my character knows is dead. So that's when she kind of gets the idea, you know, people kind of think and kind of thing. And then that also makes her very, very um, reluctant. She has a lot of guilt and stuff when she actually starts going with the hero because he's one of the men that sent this man she loved away. Okay, now that is my dinner. So I think I am done for today. I will go down and I don't know, maybe I'll post them tonight. I don't know. Let me look at them, see what they look like um, and have my dinner. <laughs> See you guys later.